appreciate the introduction. Uh, many of you know me. Um, I'm actually flattered that so many of my uh, uh, gunner, gunnerites and Montgomery industry partners uh, would come out and join Leadership Montgomery. Uh, just to kind of get a feel for it, if you're a member of Leadership Montgomery, could you please raise your hand? Okay, and now for the Montgomery IT community as personified by vendors who support PELBES and Gunter BES personnel. So I'm really, really, you know, quite honored that you guys would turn out because um, how many of you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell, his book, The Tipping Point? You know, he, he really has those three fundamental <clears throat> rules here, the law of the few, where you're looking at three types of people, your connectors, your maven, and your salesman. I, I really think it's great to have this assemblage of people where you got the leaders of Montgomery connected with some of the IT people of Montgomery, because I think we're on the verge of a major inflection point for this city. There are a number of ingredients here, of which we're going to talk about a few today, that we simply need to build upon, and that is your Montgomery Internet Exchange. And if I've done my job successfully today, hopefully you will know a little bit more about it, and hopefully I can make it plain for you. Uh, and my daughter was teasing me that I didn't use a lot of color in my presentation. I wanted to make it as plain as possible, so as to say this is not endorsed by the United States Air Force, it's not endorsed by my employees, this is strictly uh, the opinions of one each toy runs. With that, what is an internet exchange? Plain and simple. If you were to put a bunch of your internet service providers in a room, they need to get their connections to the network so that they can then resell it to all of you. So whether you're using Charter, Knowledge, whoever is your current cable provider, they have to have access to big pipes so that they can send little pipes your way. Okay? And when an assemblage of them come together in one location, that's called an internet exchange. And the big deal about that is that the more internet service providers you get locked in that room, the bigger the pipe they all have to have. The bigger the pipe, the more you attract people who are interested in doing business on the internet. And who isn't interested in doing business on the internet? It is the future of the world, not just Montgomery, Alabama. The Montgomery Internet Exchange brings together these companies that I've listed, Akamai Technologies, Wide Open West, and the others that you've seen. And the big deal is speed. The faster you go, the more you attract industry to come and be located near and next to you. That's why it's a big deal. That's why we need to proselytize, advertise, whatever kind of ties to let people know what Montgomery has here. And I just heard since I'm sitting here, it's a huge cost savings. So, Carl, if you would just share some of the cost savings you're looking at for Auburn. Yes. Um, good afternoon. My name is Carl Stockton. I'm the new, I use the word new chancellor at Auburn University of Montgomery. I've been here seven months. Um, our CIO has been working with the city on this internet exchange for our, for our campus. Just to kind of give you some cost savings. We currently, for the campus, for one gigabyte for the campus, we pay $52,000. Um, if we're able to work out this deal, we're still working out a few things with the lawyers, uh, a one gigabyte cost to us would be about $500. <laughs> and a 20 gigabyte for the campus, you know, our kids, they want more, more bandwidth. Would, if we went to 20 gigabytes, it, it would only be 22000 instead of 52000 that we currently pay for one gigabyte. So just give you an idea. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's here in Montgomery. And you all need to be proud and talk about it. You have we we have the ingredients to make Montgomery great. What is a content delivery network? Plain and simple. Who has an account with Netflix? Okay. I have to have my little moment of techie humor. So bear with me. I hope the sound comes through. Who remembers this? We 
still have them. I still have them. Or 56 I was hoping it would get to the end where it would say, you have mail. <laughs> but um, Netflix is all about speed. To be able to push movies to as many million customers as they have, distance is an impediment. So in order to get that movie to you in a rapid way, they need to put their servers as close to you as they possibly can. Okay? Well, because if they don't, you might get a little frustrated with the service. It might take too long. You, you might not be able to see Forrest Gump one more time. Okay? Well, by using a service like Akamai, they locate servers all around the globe. They pre-position data centers all around the world, and they pre-position those videos. They pre-position your pictures. Who's, who has stuff on Facebook? That's pretty much everybody in here, I believe. All your pictures, all your videos. If that stuff was located at Facebook's headquarters, it would take forever to get it all to you because everything, they need to pipe the size of the planet in order for everyone to have responsiveness. But by Pre-positioning those. Uh oh. I got it. Keep talking. By pre-positioning that uh, those servers out to where you are, they are able to deliver in a faster, more reliable, more robust way. And so now Akamai is located where? Right here in Montgomery. It's a major node. You may not have noticed it, but your videos are getting to you faster. Your pictures are getting to you faster. Why? Because of Montgomery Internet Exchange. Akamai is world class. They put servers around the world so they can deliver your static, that's pictures, and your streaming content, like video. Okay? And people all around the world, they are using it. And the more we can tell people that we have it right here in Montgomery, the more we will attract other ISP providers to locate in the Montgomery Internet Exchange and grow it from there. Sir, you have a question? I don't understand. Do you mean that the whole content of, of Netflix is residing on the computers here in Montgomery, or, or much of the, con the, the often used content? The often used content. They have algorithms in their, in their network to determine what assets particular regions of the world download the most, and their systems learn over time what they need to position where. And they're constantly moving content all around the world based on demand. So it's, it's sitting right there in the RSA building. It's sitting right here in the RSA building. So as you might imagine, if you're you know, a country and western music lover, maybe they have some country and western songs located right here in Alabama. Whereas if you're in Germany and you want to hear some of uh, you know, music that's popular over there, I'm sure they have servers located there to deliver the content that that part of the world is most interested in. Now, for the, your United States Air Force, it's a big deal because Akamai is what we call network in defense. Okay, uh, how many of you remember a few years ago when Walmart, or yeah, I believe it was Walmart, they had a bad Black Thursday because they had a lot of hackers hitting the Walmart site at one time and it brought their servers down for about 15 minutes. Okay, that made big news in nerd community. You know, we pay attention to that type of thing. Uh, Akamai is able to, uh, I've been to their facility in Boston there, they have a map of the internet, the globe, and they're able to see hot spots and attacks going on around the planet, and they literally redivert internet traffic from one part of the, of the world to another so that, again, you're not disrupted. And why is that important? You're right here in little old Montgomery. You are now a part of that network. You are a part of delivering services to the world. And that's a big deal. If I can get this to, what did you do, Stacey? <laughs> like a good husband, you always blame your wife. Is <laughs> Montgomery, in conjunction with Akamai, 
you are now one hop away from virtually all the major internet content in the world. Whether that's provided by another big company, whether it's provided by e-commerce such as Abercrombie and French, Best Buy, high tech companies, media and entertainment, Disney, whatever, and of course governments all around the world are trying to make use of this thing we call the internet. The big deal is speed wins business. Business follows speed on the internet. Just to give you a little bit of a sample, Comcast, their fastest internet <coughs> service in the, in the United States is 75 megabits per second. Google Fiber is at gigabit. That is 1,000 megabits per second. That's an order of magnitude larger. So when we talk about Montgomery becoming a big city, look at how much faster we would be able to deliver content. And if you are able to provide Google, I mean, a gigabit level of service, business will come to you. Let me tell you about Chattanooga. 1969, Chattanooga was America's most polluted city. Over time, they did a lot of things to improve the city, just like every city attempts to improve over time. They cleaned their air, they built the aquarium. They're probably the leader in East Tennessee. But the big thing they did in 2009 was their power, their major power supplier, did a major technology upgrade. They upgraded the power grid, and they had the foresight to include a fiber optic network providing gigabit service. Now look at the timeline. 2011, Amazon came knocking. They wanted to put a fulfillment center in. 2015, Amazon is adding more jobs there. Google Fiber is coming to Huntsville. It's a big deal to get gigabit service. So I'm excited about this uh, Montgomery Internet Exchange. I think we should stand on the mountaintop. Matter of fact, before you leave here today, I'm going to give you the way you should uh, address people when they ask you how you're doing. <laughs> okay? Montgomery, again, I started this with an inflection point. Look at the assets, the, the cookbook of things we have in this city surrounding IT. You have my organization out at Gunner. We do a billion dollars a year in business in IT around the world. A number of those businesses are represented right here in this room that do software development for the Air Force. DISA, sitting right out there at Gunner, they own the largest medical database in the world. Sits right here in little old Montgomery. State of Alabama has its infrastructure, IT infrastructure here. Mason Tanaka, he's their CIO. He has the authority to hopefully uh, leverage and implement a lot more IT projects and initiatives right here in Little Old Montgomery. The RSA Dexter Avenue Data Center. The city of Montgomery, I'm proud to say, just reached out. You might have heard about it on the news. Uh, open data. Making your data available to its citizenry. And that is powerful because everything's about the data. The more you have access to the data, the more people can learn. This planet is about sharing of information. He who shares the most information rules, believe it or not. If you look at most of the wealth that's been generated around the world has been largely around people who can share and make use of information. Hadn't been the guy who can bend metal. It's been the guy who can bend information faster, more efficiently than the next guy. Another huge initiative I want to footstop, please be on the listen for the uh, Maxwell Air Force Base because we're going to make it the smart base. And what I want you all to do is pull out your phones when you go home tonight and just Google YouTube Smart City because we need to make Montgomery a smart city. Okay, what is a smart city? Well, when your refrigerator begins to tell you that it's time to order from Publix, the eggs, the milk, what have you, that's a smart city. When your car tells you to turn this way instead of the way you normally go because it has already anticipated the traffic jam because it's sharing information with other cars on the road and it knows the fastest route. 
when your doctors have access to your health care records and they can make a timely decision that saves your life. That's a smart city. And you go to park, go into the mall, and you want to know where do I park? And you can get that information in real time. That's a smart city. When you're able to turn off the lights in your buildings and save a lot of electricity, so that you only turn on the lights and use the electricity when you need it, you're saving on your bill, you're saving the planet, that's a smart city. We're going to try to do all of those initiatives right out here at Maxwell Air Force Base. General Quas wants to leverage that with the city of Montgomery. So as we make the base smarter, hopefully we can make the city smarter, and it's going to count on a lot of you. A lot of you are here saying, I'm not that technical. I'm not that smart. And I say, great. Because it is our job to make your life easier with this technology, but we need you all to tell us what are the pain points in your life. What are the problems we need to solve? And I really need you all to get behind this thing we are calling Hack Montgomery. There's a meeting tomorrow at Union Station. Put it on your calendars. Please come join us. This is a group, uh, Mr. Boyd Stevens, uh, raise your hand, Boyd. Boyd, he, he is a jewel to the city of Montgomery because he is what Malcolm Gladwell calls a connector. Boyd is trying to connect those, the elements of this recipe for the benefit of this city. And leadership, Montgomery, you need to support him. IT, um, CACI, ESA, all of you companies that are here, we need to get behind it and support it. We have ideas of how to develop some applications that will help make Montgomery better. We need to develop an industry that doesn't simply rest on the laurels of what we've had for years. All of this is a great foundation, but if we're really going to make Montgomery great, we got to grow. We have to grow it. I-65. I-65 runs from the north of Alabama all the way to the south. It connects some of our major assets of Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, and Mobile. That's a physical connection. How do we make the equivalent information connection? Because wealth in the future is going to be determined by he who can move information and data. So I'm proposing that Montgomery help lead the initiative of a digital highway. How do we connect the space people in Huntsville to the healthcare people in Birmingham? Montgomery happens to have an IT community. Montgomery happens to have the state of Alabama government. Montgomery happens to have an automotive footprint here. Mobile happens to have an aerospace and maritime footprint. All of those business domain, all of those verticals thrive on information. And if we train our kids, if we train the citizen, train our citizens on being experts at moving data, it can help move this state forward. We all need information. We all need to pay our, pay our part. <clears throat> the next slide is about maybe. It's about possibilities. These are the opinions of one each Tory Robinson. You've heard about the Open Data Montgomery Initiative. How do we grow that to Open Data Alabama? How do we get what's working in one part of the state to be leveraged across another part of the state for all Alabamians' benefits? Maybe we can work with our legislature. Many of you who are in leadership Montgomery, you probably know members of your legislature. Many of you probably have contacts with the legislature. Hey, how do we grow IT in this state? And I'm just saying, maybe you should have a requirement in this state that at least a backup copy of your data has to be managed in this state. Okay? If we're not careful, Microsoft and Amazon will 
they, they will make it so compelling that they, you, they will entice you to put your data out there. And the great state of Washington and the great state of Seattle will be glad to take the profits from the amount of money you spend to manage your data for you there. Let's keep that money, let's keep that business in the state of Alabama. At least a backup copy of your data. There's about, what, 67 counties in the state of Alabama. They all have county records. How do we keep their records? How do we keep their data? At least a backup copy. It may be a bit too much to ask that they keep all of their data in the state of Alabama, but at least a backup, because that would at least create a momentum for an IT and information workforce in the state of Alabama, and every county needs it. Again, uh, how do we give a tax break to create IT workforce in the state of Alabama? Paid on political announcement of one each toy box. <laughs> so how do you participate? How do you participate? Education matters. Um, you cannot build this workforce if our school system is being taken over by the state. That's a paid political announcement from the one each toy runs. We all have to get involved with how to improve the Montgomery County school system. It matters. It matters. Because if we plan to have somebody available when we get old to take care of us who have some level of uh, IQ and intelligence, I think a lot of that hinges upon our ability to train the young people of today so that they can become productive citizens that run Montgomery tomorrow. We all got to invest in our school system. We got to ask our ISPs for faster levels of service. If we're going to become a gig city, it's only because we demand it as customers, as consumers. And I want to, yes? Well, on that one, I mean, I guess I've been thinking about this question, because as a business, looking at our speed and our IT services, are there companies in Montgomery that are already connecting to this exchange? Are we just starting, or where are we in progress? And if we're getting ready to sign a contract, you know, and I'm kind of interested in what you were saying about AUM, just thinking about, where we are in this process and how we find out yes. who's there and what capabilities. Yes, uh, in the first or second slide when I spoke about the internet exchange, those uh, seven or eight companies are the ones that are currently today real members of the Montgomery Internet Exchange. I mean, I'm, I'm not prepared to say I endorse them, yeah. But, yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, they, they are supporting of the Montgomery Internet Exchange, so I support us supporting them. Right? If they're trying to build this capability, we should get behind them as well. Yes. I, I, will, I will tell you that uh, we're just waiting on the lawyers to clear up one item before we sign the Internet Exchange from Auburn. And are you signing directly with them, or are you going through? No, we're signing from Auburn University of Montgomery. To the, uh, directly to the directly. Thing. Yeah. So there's not, is there a way for businesses to do that, or do you have to be a certain size, I'm sure? Toy, if, if I may. Yes. Marcus and I work for the Internet Exchange. Uh -huh. we can, and we can help you. Okay. And I work for RSA at the data center. Excellent. So if anybody wants to come and actually take a tour of the data center and see what we have and want to be a part of it, and we are open for your backup, your DR. We are open to be your site. Absolutely. So uh, I've got business cards and you're I welcome. Couldn't, that's why you're I couldn't be proud You know I am. <laughs> Plus we're, we're meeting on to talk about your issue this afternoon. Good, thank okay. you. <laughs> I couldn't be proud of it. You all are here because, again, I don't know you all directly. I mean, with the Air Force, we contract things a little bit differently, but as a public citizen and as an IT professional, I can't be more proud of that you all are establishing and taking root right here in Montgomery because it gives our workforce a place to do something, uh, you know, outside of our sometimes formal government contractor processes, right guys? <laughs> so, uh, again, how do we participate Early I, oh, question. I wanted to add on when you were still talking to the Citizens Info and Awareness, um, just a, a couple of things. If you want to learn more about what Voice and 
who has been telling you relative to open data in Montgomery and what opportunities it can afford your business, how you can use it from an entrepreneurial standpoint, how you can use it to forecast things that are happening and really take advantage of opportunities. Next week, we're doing a free cyber forum. Boy Stevens is our, our keynote speaker, 7.30 over at the Chambers Business Resource Center. He is going to come and do for Open Data Montgomery what Toy is doing for us today relative to the, the internet exchange and what's going on in our IT community. So come learn, have a page street, walk away smarter and, and, and help your knowing your goal. Okay. Next Wednesday, the 22nd, 7.30. A.M. Um, and we don't have to wait until next Wednesday. <laughs> I want to add. I want to add that next Wednesday is a great event. But tomorrow, 6 p.m., 16th of March, Union Street, 200 Union Station, 200 Water Street is the next Hack GM, M, Hack MGM meetup. Really would love to see a number of you come out and support and join that activity. Because again, remember we talked about smart city. Remember I said, how do you participate? Many of you are not programmers, but you get frustrated with the technology that you use in your day-to-day -day life. We geeks need to hear that over and over and over again because out of a problem, out of necessity, is how technology moves forward. See, and you guys have the ideas of how technology can make your life better. Whenever you say they ought to, hopefully you're in front of a few geeks so that we can hear you and maybe, maybe we can translate that into a product idea. and Maybe that can become a, a next business opportunity in the city of Montgomery. You know, again, if we can get the counties around the state of Alabama to store their data here, that generates a workforce right here in Little Old Montgomery. So right at the end of my briefing, when someone asks you, how, how y'all doing? I want you all to be able to ask them, where's your data? <laughs> where's your data? Because Montgomery's got a story to tell you about data, and data is the key to life in the future of tomorrow. So when they say, how y'all doing? Where's your data? data? Because we have the data center. We have the Montgomery Internet Exchange. We have the IT workforce. Hopefully with all of your participation and collaboration, we'll have the educational system that we need to sustain that workforce, to develop and grow that workforce. Okay? That's why Montgomery becoming a big city is indeed a big deal. Thank you. I take all questions for our <laughs>